prime focus today has been the results coming out for the Karnataka Assembly elections. And to take this further, I'm joined by our guest, uh, former Union Minister and former Chief Minister of Maharashtra, Prithvira Chauhan, joining me live here. Uh, good, uh, good evening, sir. Thank you so much for taking our time and joining us here at Mirror Now. Uh, massive congratulations. This is the landslide victory of the Congress Party. The numbers that we are projecting right now is 137. You were expecting a victory, but with these numbers? No, well, absolute majority, yes, more than 113, maybe 113 to 120. Uh, but there were some leaders like Mr. Sidramaya did say uh, 130, Shukumarji was saying 141. So Karnataka leaders were expecting anything over 120. But uh, I would have been happy with the absolute majority or a little more than absolute majority. So we would be beyond the pale of Operation Kamala. But I think we are extremely happy with 137. Looks like a, a decisive uh, victory for us and a decisive route for the BJP's corrupt government. But Mr. Chavan, what do you think worked for the Congress Party this time around? The fact that the central leadership of the Congress Party let the stalwarts from the regional Congress take charge, take precedence. Do you think that is something that has steered the Congress Party to victory? No, no, no. The, clearly the reasons for victory, as I analyze it, the Congress Party's election campaign was led by local leaders. Mr. Shukumar and Mr. Sidramaya. They strategized the election over one year, not just uh, running here and there in the last one week or two weeks. The central leaders helped them, but it was clearly led, strategized, organized by the local leaders, uh, along with the uh, district level leaders, uh, the many leaders. They were helped by Mr. Khadge, who is our national president. But for a change, Congress party did not disturb the local stalwarts, local leaders, and they were allowed to lead the campaign, which they did over a period of last one year. And I think that is one positive. The second thing, we are able to focus on the corruption of the BJP government, the way they brought down the Congress JDS government in 2019 and installed a very, very corrupt government in its place. The 40% commission uh, issue stuck to the BJP at all. They did not have a very attractive face in Mr. Bomai. They were infighting in the Lingayat community with Yadurappa on one side, the other leaders who were denied tickets, and they crossed over to Congress party. So there was a confusion in the BJP ranks, and they finally dependent on Mr. Modi to come and deliver Karnataka for them. Mr. Modi did come, had a massive road show. There were a lot of inauguration programs just before the election, but that did not work primarily because when Karnataka was reeling under floods, when suffering from drought, there were landslides. Nobody turned up from Delhi, particularly Mr. Amit Shah and Mr. Modi turned back on Karnataka. And people didn't appreciate that at all. Uh, just working, coming here and uh, during the election time and asking for votes was not acceptable. Uh, I think Congress party also focused on local issues, the corruption, uh, also unemployment and uh, inflation, price rise were the local issues. And uh, Congress was able to focus that Narendra Modi has called, uh, caused price rise, has caused unemployment. They are not able to fix these issues. But Congress party will try and fix them. But while they are fixing them over the next five years, they will give them immediate succor, immediate relief in shape of the five guarantees that we offered to the people of Karnataka, particularly women folk of Karnataka. And people believed us and people uh, knew that that will really give them uh, relief in their household uh, budget planning and uh, unemployed youth were happy. So I think it was a uh, hyper-local campaign. We did not get embroiled in the uh, polarization effort done by uh, Mr. Modi and the BJP at the end. We just ignored that, but uh, continued to stick to our uh, anti-corruption campaign and uh, pro-people five guarantees. That worked. And everybody worked together, shoulder to shoulder. There were no infighting. While there are aspirants for the chief ministers, more than one, definitely, but there's nothing wrong being uh, as, having ambitious to become the top person and That is in the exactly state. my next question to you, Mr. Chavan, because you yourself have been a former chief minister of Maharashtra. 
it looks like the Congress has a problem of plenty in this case, where you have D.K. Shiva Kumar, you have Siddha Ramaya, there's also Mr. Malikarjun Kharge, who's a popular name to be the chief minister, and you have G. Parmeshwara also. Uh, how is the Congress party going to uh, settle this matter internally? Because we have seen that the warring heads of the Congress party often pose the trouble for the grand old party. No, no, I think there is nothing wrong with uh, be having ambitions uh, to be the uh, top person in the state, leading the state. Nothing wrong with that. But there is a mechanism. I think this time also, the Congress Legislative Party of 137 members will sit down. If required, they'll vote. I remember in 2008, I was in charge, General Secretary of Karnataka, and we did not win the election. But when the time came to select a leader of opposition, Mrs. Gandhi clearly told me that you consult the MLAs, if required, take a poll. And that is exactly what I and uh, Digvijay Singh and I did that. And we, at that time, appointed Sri Shidramaya after the election process. So I think there is no reason why we cannot consult uh, newly elected MLAs as to who they want to be led by. I think uh, there is uh, no infighting at all. I mean, it will be an amicable process. Or could it be a formula of two and a half years and two and a half years between Siddharamaya and D.K. Shiva Kumar? Or could the Congress party pull a wild card? Uh, what exactly is in store? Are you surely going to go by how the MLAs are going to be choosing their leadership? Or is the Congress going to devise a new way ahead? No, no, I think this two and a half years, two and a half years doesn't work. We've seen this formula being talked of in earlier election when we won the states in, uh, in Madhya Pradesh, uh, uh, it doesn't work. But I think let, let us trust and believe that newly elected MLAs, some of them are stalwarts, some of them are very senior leaders. I mean, they will be able to come to a conclusion. After all, they want a stable government and they want to be led by a person who inspires confidence in them, who leads them by the front. And I think they'll be able to uh, come up with a formula, uh, to come up with a uh, way of choosing their leaders, and that leader will be chosen very shortly. Uh, Mr. Chavan, like you mentioned that it was a hyper-local elections. That is the reason why all the Congress party leaders worked in tandem in a focused manner, not letting their eyes off the prize at all. They did not get uh, lured into the other controversy that the BJP may have uh, sought a reaction from the Congress party. But this may not necessarily be a blueprint for 2024 elections. How do you see Karnataka Assembly elections having any impact on the general elections of next year? No, I'm frankly not looking at 2024 general elections. I'm right now looking at the three assembly elections where that very important hurdle to cross. We won Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, and Rajasthan in last time, 2018. And no, there are strong leaders in Chhattisgarh and uh, Madhya Pradesh. And there are also uh, leaders in Rajasthan, but they have an issue as to who leads the campaign. But I think Congress party has a unit which will fight. So I think we have to win all the three assembly elections before we go to, or before you talk about 2024 Lok Sabha election. 2024 election also shows us a way that if you focus on issues, whether it's a national issue, whether it's a corruption issue, whether it's inflation, uh, unemployment, whatever issue we choose, we must focus and not let our eyes be off that issue. BJP will raise some uh, national security issue. BJP will definitely raise the common civil code issue. They will try to create some... Uh, last time they created uh, Pakistan situation, they, they're quite capable of doing all that. But we should not lose focus. We should remain on uh, focused on issues of the people, uh, in un unemployment, uh, price rise, you know, women, women's issues, the way women are being treated, senior functioning to BJP, they can freely go and molest anybody and nothing happens to them. Uh, the polarization that is happening, but people don't like polarization, people don't like strife like that, because their bread and butter issues are affected when there is a strife, when there is a communal rioting there. So I think uh, the international community is also looking very closely at what happens in India, because you see, every indice is that freedom index, the press freedom index, all that we are slipping down and people are worried whether there is a genuine democracy in India or not. So I think we should not let our attention be diverted by what BJP brings up tomorrow. First, 
We had to win the three assembly elections. And next, we'll uh, make a broad opposition coalition for 2024 election.